starting to happen. Okay, I'm live. You're, you're live, so if you wanted to post it, it would be on the um, YouTube channel. There should be something on the YouTube channel. I probably should check it, because I fucking recorded one one evening. Oh, will I not say that? What's that? Will I not say that? No, I'm saying I should probably check that it actually is live, because I recorded one one evening with a mate. Yeah. And I, I lost. All right. The uh, see this here now. I can click on this and put the intro video on, and that should be going live. Can you just see if it's on your on your phone on YouTube? Frank. If, Frank. Come on, man. So they can watch me going on your phone now. I'll just subscribe to the channel, Joe. Do you mind? My, yeah, my no, channel? yeah, no, sorry. No. I should have. No, no, sure, look. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so that's brilliant. That's it. So yeah. There, that's us. That's amazing. Isn't it? It's great. Look, look, your phone doesn't flip. Anyway, so I. You can share that if you want to, so I'll just help you along. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Copy links, and then you put it into your face. Or do you, can you sell it? Or you, here, you do it. I don't know, so I'll just share it like a normal thing. Yeah. Share this on my Facebook. It's the top of my head cut off there. Love so it. I recorded one evening went live with a mate. It was the first time I actually put um, I, I put this event thing. You can do this live event thing on YouTube and you can say, I'm going to do, have a live broadcast on this date. Yeah. So I went, recorded it live. Or we, we set the whole thing up and we chatted for an hour. We actually had a nice little glass of whiskey. Mm. It was a great hour, bit of banter. And I presumed the whole thing was broadcasting live. Mm. And uh, nothing was. And so you had people actually waiting, surprisingly. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's the first time I tried to do something like that. Pain yeah. loop, that. Gosh, I should do one. Yeah. Anyway, we're live. We're live now, yeah. So, um... Should, have to, should we have it all said downstairs? Haven't we really... <laughs> well, you said you'd ask me a question. Oh, I'll ask you a question. Yeah. yeah. Grand, yeah. Uh, have you done a live podcast before? No, I haven't. Okay, first time. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's a year since, more or less a year since we met, since our first podcast. Oh, is it a year? Right, yeah. Yeah, it was around yeah. this time last year we said uh, it was 14 weeks to the marathon. Yeah, right, yeah, that's right, yeah. Because mm. um, we basically had a 12-week training plan, yeah. Yeah, and 12 weeks, yeah, so and we went cool, for it, right? yeah. Wow. Um, mm. But, sorry, I have a que what was my question for you? So you've had a good year. Have I had a good year? Yeah, yeah I have. Um, yeah, because I did the marathon. That was a big deal for me. That was my yeah. first marathon. It was a big, uh, you know, kind of ma uh, block in my mind. What can I do a marathon? And then I did it. Yeah. Uh, did a, you know, I did a film over in a, over in the States, which it should be coming out on a lot not on general release but we'll be doing the indie circuit this year yeah I met a Amandine who's now my girlfriend uh, oh, and nice. uh, at the electric picnic so she's now she's your girlfriend uh, uh, yeah did she call she, you the boyfriend yeah she introduces me as my as her boyfriend okay that's nice yeah yeah and uh there's three big things. And we're babysitting your dog. She'd, oh, be, she'd be glued to this. That's right. Yeah. Bonnie's actually babysitting your dog, Amandine. Amandine's yeah. probably at a meeting now. She can't be watching this. Oh, I suppose, there, yeah. uh, mm. Over in Amsterdam. Okay. Hey, but I saw something on mm. um, uh, Facebook that you posted about this new sitcom or might have the potential to get somewhere this guy he was saying something about he's doing he's shooting the final episode or looking for inspiration 
I think he's going around Yonkers. Looking oh, for his yeah. inspiration and you're in that. Oh, sorry, that's another thing I did, yeah. No, yeah. So I went over to uh, uh, Kansas City again twice. I did Kansas City last year. Uh, the first time I went over was around St. Patrick's Day and this guy had, was shooting a, is it a teaser or something? Pilot, no. It's not a pilot because it's not a full half hour. It's a something reel, a teasy reel or something. Okay. <laughs> no, uh, something like that, something real. Yeah. Um, uh, and is this what to give you the taster of the uh, of the uh, give a, a, companies the taster of what the potential for this is? That yeah, is. yeah. So it was uh, called McLean. It's it's called McLean Avenue, and uh, it was about basically Irish American family or or uh, fr family and friends. Uh, set around a, a real place called McLean Avenue in the Bronx. Mm. And I was actually playing a priest in it. Right. Uh, which is, you know, typecast. But it was a different kind, <laughs> different kind of priest. Yeah. So it was a shot there in Kansas City. In a, um, and then, uh, the, I know that uh, they got, they brought it to Netflix and he said, he said also Amazon, but I should we you don't know. No, you don't. But yeah, yeah it'd be amazing for something like that now. Or would it? Oh yeah, Jesus, be, that'd be unbelievable! Yeah. yeah, you'd have to move to New York. I would definitely. And would you would? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Very um, good. But you never know with those things. Mm. Um, even if something like that gets picked up, whether they they then say, "Oh, but we want to cast." Yeah, I think people. it's funny. You've no concept, or most I'd say people have no concept of the level to which you know this idea, say, of making it right or. Of getting the hit show or getting the um, all that is required and the amount of non hits that are required almost. I mean, obviously, you can get a hit straight away, there's no rules about how things can work, but you know, it'd very it'd definitely be the exception, yeah. To earn money, a lot of money at something like that, it's yeah, it's more, it's an exception or it's a finite number, it can happen, yeah, yeah. But I think in America, there's even more of uh, there's more shit being thrown at the wall I suppose to see what will stick you know there's a, a there's the uh, pilot season in LA you've heard of the pilot no, season no I haven't no uh, they just make hundreds of pilots right and maybe and one or two might get picked up fuck um, hell because you'd be so rude like I don't know what you're like but watching a, po uh, a something on Netflix it literally maybe you'll give it an episode maybe you'll give it two yeah but that's it, like, and there might be three or four seasons there, or there might, you know, there might have been one season. But the the what makes it brilliant? What makes it really good? Or how can somebody decide? Like a Sopranos on one episode, did it suck you in straight away? We're just so impatient because we're inundated with these shows yeah, now. Yeah, particularly now. Yeah, yeah. I've started watching a thing called The Sinner. I think. Yeah, seen that. Yeah, saw the first one. Yeah, but I I watched uh, the first two episodes. Um, good few months ago and I went ah no it's not that good and then I just started watching it again and went actually it is good it is <laughs> but good, it, yeah. it's just really weird that you can be so picky and even see something that's good and go ah, I don't know yeah so then yeah. deciding amongst a hundred but it's interesting that they go to the level mm -hmm. of making hundreds of them that's like you know it's because it's so easy obviously to bring shit to life nowadays whereas maybe years ago it wasn't you know what I mean but that's like oh, but I'd say even to get something made that's that's unbelievable achievement to get, to get a pilot made to, to get a pilot made is an amazing achievement mm. and then to get past that is an incredible achievement mm. I, I read a thing about George Clooney like he he uh, before he got was it ER he became big in I think um, he'd done something like seven pilots that weren't weren't picked up mm. like you know what I mean? That's the the thing yeah. about it. Um, I think it is it, the, the, because you say because it's such a creative side of the brain being used to 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 act. It is. It's almost the. Um, it's a it, it's a more gentle side of the brain that almost is used. Like it's not like building a wall, acting. You know, it's not the same side of the brain that's used. So then, for you to put the, something out there and it fails 
and then to go back again and it fails and to go back again and it fails mm. and to go back again and it fails. There has to be some love in there for... There has to be more love for the actual doing of it than the the applauds or the fuck. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I would have been very sensitive about that uh, uh, up until, I don't know, recently maybe. But uh, the whole thing is really that... Yeah, I've learned my lesson that that's not really... It's not personal at all. No. And it, and even... Um, I was talking to this guy, Dan Bell, who's going to be in my next... He's my next guest on my podcast. He's a casting agent from L.A. and uh, But he's a former actor. He's in Wayne's World of Darkman. And uh, so I just asked him, like, go, going from being an actor to a, a casting agent, is the right thing you, you would learn from that? And he just said, well, it's not personal at all you could be you could go in and do and and do the best casting you could be the best out of everyone they've seen but you just might not have the right look for that particular Mm. uh uh, film or sitcom or ad or whatever but but you still you still might have impressed the director for a future something down down the road you might yeah you might stick in stick in his mind he said he got he got um I think it was Wayne's World. He got he did a really bad casting. Just blew it. Right. But but uh the director still came back to him and said it was just he got the right look, like and he, he wanted him to come back. Mm. I think it's kinda of liberating though for somebody going in to do an audition to know it's not fucking personal. You know, it's he, all you can do I mean that's the case mm. with anything really is. Yes. I suppose, but to hear it's nothing to do with you really. It's to do with what they're looking for. And I mean, even if you do blow them away and you do the best fucking thing you could ever possibly do, mm. still Yeah, say still though, the taking it not taking it personal. It's, and it's, it's really, really hard not really, to take it yeah, personal. Yeah. But it's It's the only way. It's I the think. only way, yeah, yeah. But it's very hard not to. I find it very hard not to. I mean after I do a, a, an audition Oh, I spend the next two hours. I'm on driving home. I'm going. Oh, I should have done that way. I should have done that way. Because you know, there's an, an infin- infinite amount of ways you could read a line. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, it's high. It is kind of high pressure. I think you, you like say your ma say. Um, this is totally different now. But say somebody like Ryan Tuberty, for example. There's, he gets an awful lot of abuse, and he. Uh, obviously, gets a bit of praise. And not that this is, I don't give a shit about this really. But anyway, I keep going. Uh, mm. But I I think the fact, you know, and people give out that he gets paid a fortune and all this. But I I think that when, say he's doing that nine o'clock uh, peak time, two million people scrutinizing every hand movement he makes mm. and the pressure of that. I, I think there is a certain amount that, I mean, what's the point? If you're not going to get paid a lot, some sort of, but then maybe there is the joy in doing like, you know, is there joy <laughs> and not getting paid? Can't you have both? But you, you Sorry, know what you mean? Sorry. You what mean am that- I trying to say? Uh, I suppose, you know, say somebody has been trying to get in somewhere for a long, long, yeah. long, long, oh, long, yeah. long, 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 long time. And then finally say they get a peak time slot. Mm. Nine o'clock. And then people three million people watching. And obviously every inch of you is scrutinized yeah every yeah. breath you make every stupid sentence that you make yeah and i mean how many stupid sentences do you make every day so then i think you know he should get paid a fortune for it yeah it would be high pressure to do a chat show every week for for months every year um definitely and then you're not getting guests i mean you know you can imagine the um they're trying to get good guests and they can't get them or something and then they yeah. I, I know I'm sure it happens and then someone cancels on them and they just end up bringing in oh, some Miriam random fucking Callahan or somebody uh, or <laughs> someone from Fair, well not saying Fair City is it but uh, you know yeah. maybe the usual and, crew uh, they're bound to be one of them at the end of the phone going oh yeah no I'm available <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. what do you think that thing is what do you think that um Say to be, there is, I'm always curious about this idea mm. of, a, you know, what, what's, the, what is the need that's being fulfilled about, uh, say, getting on TV or, 
Don't know. I haven't been on. I'm not on TV. So why, why are you asking me? I mean, I've no. I'm curious. On. Do you ever think about that? Like you get up on stage. I mean, that's like I said to you before. That's terrifying. Yeah. And you're uh, totally putting yourself out there. To no, be... it's not. Uh, yeah, it is uh, to start out with. No, but I, sure, when I go on stage, I'm, I'm in control of what's happening. Well, not really, I suppose. But, but uh, going on the chat show is far more lack of control. I mean, I've not done many chat shows. I mean, <laughs> I do uh, the TV3 afternoon, uh, Man Friday thing, the afternoon thing sometimes. What's that? It's... Uh, it's a panel thing in the afternoon and usually it's all women and then on a Friday they get all men mm. and there's a, a girl hosting it. And is it good? Do you enjoy uh, it? Well, I enjoy doing it but mm. I never watch it back. But, uh, <laughs> mm. like, I should, mate. Why should I? No, why should I actually? Because I'm just... Well, you're just going to look at yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just going to scrutinise yourself. Well, yeah. That, that's just fucking... So we're doing it. But the other thing I did, I did do the Late Late Show when Pat Kenny was doing it. I did it once when Tuberty was doing it as well. Uh, but the time, one of the times I did Pat Kenny's Late Late Show, uh, if you're a stand-up, you know, they would say, send us in your material... And then um, Pat will just ask you questions that will lead you on to, to your, a joke. To the joke, and right? Everybody gets that. Like I think everybody watching the show kind of knows that, don't they? But that's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's it's come on and we keep going. Well, so I had some material about I can't remember what it was exactly, but it was about the Angelus, and I think I kind of went. I think that was my favorite show was the Angelus, like, and then I go, I kind of do a bit about it. The people looking into the distance and all that. <laughs> and that was what was the opening with. So, and I'd just come back from a few gigs in Scotland. So, kind of just said, he kind of just said, ah, you're just, so you're just back from Scotland. What's it like over there? And, you know, just a bit of a, an intro. Ah, oh, sure, it's grand, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, well, it's good that you're back from Sc Scotland because you love watching TV. And, like, that doesn't make <sighs> any sense. There's no segue there at all for you. Like, because obviously they have TVs in Scotland. Yeah. Uh, but that was supposed to be his segue for me the Angelus. To watching the Angela, and it was just terrible. And I, but it's a live TV, so uh, for a millisecond, I just, you know, I just go. There was obviously a look of confusion on my face, <laughs> and then it hit me. Oh, he wants me, and I just went into talking about the Angelus, but it didn't make sense that I started talking about the Angelus because. Oh, uh, I kind of had to go yeah I love watching TV particularly The Angelus but it doesn't um, <laughs> anyway oh. sure, that was Pat Kenny I mean he's a decent bloke but he's he, he, he great at politics I always thought but yeah. not great on just re talking to people just that human interaction just seemed yeah. to be missing whereas yeah. there was a bit of kind of argument required or a bit of yeah, oh, politics, politics or amazing. controversy. He was, brilliant. he was brilliant. Any kind yeah. of debate, he was in his own. I thought yeah, yeah. He was in his element. But uh, yeah, the interview with the celebrity, if it, not maybe a celebrity, but even the interview with the celebrity with who had just brought out a book, he always seemed to put his foot in it. Like oh, I think it was just that you can even sense to feel the rigidness of him. He just wasn't comfortable. It was just yeah, like, and also he was one of those guys that had the list of questions, so it didn't matter if. Say, for example, he's asked his first question and uh, and the guest said, well, I mean, that ring, you know, that's very personal to me now because my father just died yesterday. He would just ignore that <laughs> and would, go on yeah. to whatever his second question. <laughs> I mean, he totally would. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was the... Um, yeah. But I think that's what everybody in the whole country watching him would kind of just feel that... That awkwardness it yeah. just make you die for him a little bit because mm. he was dying, and then everybody else could feel that death. And what was worse, there was no recognition that I hate this. There was no acknowledgement that I'm, you know, if he was able to let go just of go, that. God, I hate this. I'd yeah. love to hear him say yeah. that. Yeah, can we not just talk about yeah. <laughs> pineapples or rashers or something? He made remember his, uh, he made a few big errors, but do you remember his one on the toy show? where uh, he had a kid on who was, I think he, the kid was a really good break dancer or something. Okay. 
and he's a little kid and he goes um oh i don't know what he said it was something like uh uh you know it's not something you'd you would think of in ireland it's more like new york you know kind of break dancing and then he said something to, but i suppose you could you could black up or something you know? like he actually said that <laughs> can you little, imagine that now little kid. Can, can, <laughs> but can you imagine that now like then i mean whenever when was that like 10 yeah how long ago did he do that it was probably 10 years ago at least you know. Yeah, there wasn't. I mean, the sensitivity to anything like that. Now he would yeah, he would be, be walked out. Now, he'd be he? frog marched out of the yeah, building. Yeah, considering what happened, Hook. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah no, he made a few faux pas, all right, in his time. Oh, I, I, and I uh, actually I just tell you, I screwed up with him as well because I'd done the late. I think I'd done the late, late show twice with him, and. Uh, and then he asked me to do, he, he's, he had this golf classic thing to raise money for charity. Okay. Once a year. And all his mates would be invited. They'd all play golf for the day and then they'd come in and there'd be entertainment. And he called me. He called me like, just the phone rings and he goes, hey, it's Pat Kenny here. And uh, <laughs> it was out of the blue, like, it was really weird. And uh, he... Um, so I went to the uh, hotel uh, and uh, I wanted to do a sound. First of all, it was a bit weird because I wanted to do a sound check and the sound man said, that's uh, Dickie Rock's sound system. You're not allowed to use it. <laughs> I was like, and I said to him, well, like, I've been asked to do some comedy. Like, Dickie Rock. I have Spit to, on me, I Dickie. I have to use Sorry. the sound system. I don't have my own ear. I have to, like, just was the weirdest thing to say and I, and he went, ah, sticky rock sound system, no one else there to use. And I went, okay, grand, look, I'm just going to tell Pat I can't do the gig. And he's going, I don't care, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to Pat Kenny and said, look, I can't do the show. I've been just told that only Dicky Rock has allowed to use that sound system. And he went, hang on, hang on. And he rings Dicky Rock and explains the situation. He goes, okay, go ahead. And then he said, look, uh, you could do half an hour, but if it's not going well, cut it short. And he gave me, he's told me some advice that that Gay Byrne had told him. If it's not going well, wrap it up. And he says, "I'll, I'll uh, signal you." Uh, He'd be really good at recognizing uh, that, wouldn't you? Uh, and actually, it turned out it was tough. Uh, there was like there were an old show band lads in the you know, and they just weren't going for my stuff mm. but um pat kenny then stood up and uh, i didn't i forgot that, that must have been his signal to go wrap it up oh. uh, but i just, oh, i just tore into him i i said he stood up and i went look at this i'm you know he's trying to do me act and he and he's trying to steal the spotlight and i just ripped into him <laughs> And then the audience really didn't like me because they were all mates. Oh, okay. Kenny. I thought they might have just laughed along with that now. No, they didn't even laugh no. with that. I thought they. I mean, get that's funny. Like, crack, like he's trying to get a bit of attention no, for himself. Like they, even now, like he yeah. didn't like that, and uh, and I and I didn't get. But I should have called him, I suppose. But uh, I didn't get booked on the late late show since. Oh God. Uh, oh, sorry. I did when Tuberty came back, but not not with Pat Kenny. Yeah. And uh, did you, you see you would been on with is is it the same formula that's used with. Ryan then that they prompt you it was the same formula with Ryan yeah uh, and I did it once with Ryan I, I haven't done it since but I like I wouldn't I wouldn't want to do it to be honest um, or it just doesn't bother me doing, mm. doing TV to be honest I don't I mean there's one there's one show in town and it's fucking um, it's the Late Late Show like that's it you know? yeah it used to be though huge it's not oh, yeah it used to be huge it used to be everything it, oh like it used to be so big that it could catapult you. I think, uh, what's his name? It does, uh, Mrs. Brown, um, Mrs. Brown's boys. Yeah, your man, yeah. He literally went from nobody to massive by doing the late, with Gay Barn, doing the late, okay. late with Gay Barn. And, uh, mm. yeah, he said, uh, and he was on the late with Gay Barn and he went, can I ask you a question, Gay? And uh, my friends, dared me to ask you this and he goes how's your mickey 
And the audience went, oh my God, he yeah. asked gay burn, how's his Mickey? <laughs> Isn't it fucking insane that that was? The thing. <laughs> hilarious. Oh, I couldn't stand, I can't stand Miss. I mean, even if, uh, it, I mean, I really like uh, Irish shows that do well abroad, but Mrs. Brown's Boys, to me, is death. Yeah. Like, it's like Ricky Gervais's, character in um extras you know that show Doing that he gets sitcom, yeah. it's the same thing like. yeah it is yeah and yeah. it's so blatantly that and she's i mean good luck to him and all that but like say for example catastrophe which i've only watched recently it's sharon horgan i knew nothing really about sharon horgan i think it's fucking genius writing yeah. i really really think it's just amazing writing i think everybody should watch it you yeah know, it's as good as any of those type of shows that you would see um and it's amazing that she did, I don't know anything about her history, like, do you? I mean, but that she's done so well with that show. I think she's done this, then this other one who looked at Divorce but from HBO. It's amazing talent, but like, mm. that's, that's talent, I think. And it really hits on a generation and it hits on mm. certain types of people just perfectly. Mm. Whereas Mrs. Brown Boys, but then Mrs. Brown Boys is one of the biggest comedy shows of all time. That's the masses, isn't it? Like Yeah, like in the UK, you'd be surprised what's huge, I think. Remember there's a sitcom called The Family, uh, which was, ran for, like, it, it was never shown on RTE here, but it was, I think it was a BBC. It was awful. I think it ran for, like, 10 years or something. I remember reading about it that even at points during the shooting, the cast of it said, no, we're not... The script was so bad, the cast actually said, we're not doing this. <laughs> and then they had to rewrite the script. Wow. But, but the audiences <laughs> kept loving it. Even though the cast were like, going, this is absolute rubbish. <laughs> uh, yeah. Something about Middle England or Middle Ireland even as well. They just like something that's not too challenging. Well, yeah, you see, I was thinking about mm. this the last day um, when I was out running, uh, my best thoughts out running, but I was thinking about this idea of the masses, like, and how the masses, you know, say religion, and I'm not getting into this, but it's just this idea in my head that religion obviously is huge and everybody feels validated because the masses, the masses go to mass. Like, the va you know, there was a time the vast majority of people go to mass. Mm. And the vast majority of people, the same, you know, and there's comfort in, well, everybody's doing it, so it must be true, it has mm. to be true. But then the same, if you were to look at the masses, they're the same masses who love Mrs. Brown Boys and watch EastEnders week in, week out. Mm. So then, anyway, so if you were ever kind of wondering about anything like that, you just go, well, the masses yeah. are more than likely wrong about something. Well, it is interesting that they would... That the masses, as we say, uh, would like... And I am one of the masses now, and saying that too. But go on, yeah. But in general, that the majority of people would want want something on TV that is just almost uh, a drug, like it doesn't make you think, that you can zone out in a way. Yeah. yeah. I'd be afraid to turn on EastEnders, because not that I would say it's absolute shit, that I'd probably get hooked... You know, such and such might have just had a baby, or ba if, um, and <laughs> you know it's a different yeah. father. And you're instantly going, "Fucking bitch!" You find yourself sucked in. You yeah. can't help it. And I, then, did, I, you know, I watched it for a while in my twenties, thing, my late twenties. Yeah. But it was only on. Uh, it was on only once a week, so but I couldn't. This idea. But that was the day with uh, with Sharon and. Um, do you remember Sharon and Dirty yes. Dan? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Well, we'd only two channels then, maybe. You know. Yeah, I yeah, but look, I I also watched. Uh, oh, what was it? The something years. The wonder years. The wonder years. I used to yeah. love the wonder years. But they were kind of cool. The wonder years, were they not? No, was, was it? kind of a dorky kid. Yeah, it was kind of his at least struggle. It might have been a bit of a formula. I can't remember, but there was something interesting about it. It was a nice fuzzy wuzzy kind of a bit like the Waltons. Do you ever see? I know, thought. But the Waltons now, or yeah. the Les the Prairie, was like made you it's feel right. like ah, there was a time when everything was grand and lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was no baddies in the world. It was all just lovely. Fuck's sake, little house. Good night, Mary Ellen. Yeah, good night, John boy. <laughs>
Or uh, I even watched, um, what's it called? The Huxtables, um, Dr. Huxtable. Uh, you know your man who's now in prison for... Oh, the Cosbys. Cosbys, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure he did. We all watched that, yeah. I think he was a fucking deviant. I always think really, really, really nice people. Really nice people. There's something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> or really people who are just have such a great front that you think, oh, that person's just flawless. They're lovely. Then yeah. there's something wrong. No? Well, no. look, uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Mm. But at, but Cosby was not just that lovely fella, but a lot of... You find people like Seinfeld and uh, people of that ilk would always have said he was the person that inspired them to be a comedian. Like, he, he yeah. was a well-respected comedian. yeah. Like he was humongous. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, I never thought he was that. I've, I've listened to him no. uh, a few bits, and I thought it's all right. I wouldn't have thought he was that good, but they l- did really respect him over there in America, mm. at least. Do you ever watch uh, um, Dynasty? <laughs> this is gold, but Dynasty and the Colbys and all that. Yeah, I watched uh, and Dallas. Obviously. Dallas, Dallas uh, is big, but then Dynasty. more Dallas. I thought. I thought. Yeah. I remember staying up to watch uh, like the first episode of Dallas uh, on RTE so it was probably a year after it was on American but it was being pushed before and I stayed like I stayed up when I was maybe 10 or 11 I, I was quite young mm. uh, but I was expecting something a bit more heavy like Paul Dark or you know a really heavy How drama How old were you? I was very young, uh, like, right, maybe, maybe 12, actually. I, I don't know, but... Uh, I just remember my parents go, turn that, or pause it, or change the channel with the dirty bits. Oh, it was dirty bits. There was a few. It wasn't even dirty bits, but... No, that doesn't... You were probably at the age where you well, were... Well, they were sexy. Sexy, sexy bits, Sexy women. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, dirty. <laughs> dirty, sexy women. Dirty, yeah. sexy women. Oh, there was the young girl was real... Sexy with blonde hair, she was always like that. Oh, that was the was, the young. The, she was the, the wild young one oh, of the family. I wasn't. I think it's. I'm thinking Sam Fox now for a second, but it's not. Uh, I know who you're talking about anyway. Yeah, she was the wild one, getting pregnant or something. Yeah, doing all mad stuff like staying up late, drinking cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> the mentler. <laughs> yeah. Fox. <laughs> Smoking in the house. Oh, sure should look. Ah, they uh, were simpler times yeah. now. Yeah, but I saw it over in the uh, of fucking paedophiles and all that and, and Catholic Ireland. Go on anyway. No. I uh, at one point uh, went to Yugoslavia when it was Yugoslavia for uh, a holiday. Well, there was a Medjugorje flight to, oh. to uh, Yugoslavia. It's where Mary appears. Yeah, yeah. Where, where Mary, they go on a pilgrimage there. Uh, so you could get that flight and then not go to Medjugorje. And I went with three friends and we stayed in, we stayed in in someone's house, like you'd stay in their house. And they were watching, um, and that was a communist country at the time, and they were watching uh, Dallas, or, right. or Dynasty, I'm not sure which, but they, and it's subtitled. It's funny. And was that like a big thing that they were, oh, all the like, whole, all you, you the know, family bootlegging almost, you know. Watching it. I mean, imagine, they were, the inflation in there at the time was, unbelievable like there were wads of notes to pay for stuff and uh, they're watching all these rich people in America mm-hmm. thinking oh it must be great over there <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, fucking hell mm. um, and that's why we were watching it like it's, it's, isn't it amazing that we were watching America thinking it's amazing over there that's all free sex and drugs and wealth and everything and we're stuck in this conservative religious country and now you look at America and you and now we are the liberals and you look yeah. at America and go they're the uh, right wing Christians who yeah. uh, you know, you want just, to, uh, they want to shut down the abortion clinics you, I, I'd be worried that is that the way it fucking goes so does, does it go in, circle, in, in cycles like that you know the more uh, liberal something gets then the conservatives seem to rise as they go because like the older I'm getting I'm, I'm becoming this fucking grumpy prick like when I hear just 
the extremity of left wing, I am, I'm almost going the other way where I'm going, ah, you're almost telling me what to do now. And you're the same as the conservative sort of approach. Uh, yeah, but I think there's a kind of left wing now that is, is like oh, almost conservative. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like dogmatic kind of, uh, um, almost like Christian, except the opposite. The opposite, yeah. They go to a protest in an envelope sort of crew. Like that's mm. that's what I get the vibe of. Yeah, I, and I hope it just doesn't become that way again here. I I, I just hope, like we are. A, I I remember Tommy Tiernan saying this years ago. Some I think it was actually an interview with Gay Byrne, and he was talking about Irish people, and he was saying, "We are a wild fucking lot. We're a nation of nutjobs." Cut mm. us off. Let us just go wild. And I think there is that kind of Celtic madness and uh, freedom that we do all enjoy, that carefreeness. Mm. And we're all, we're, we are a little bit nuts and a little bit wild in our, in our heart of hearts. But obviously there's humongous amount of influences from Catholicism to the, yeah, to Britain, to whatever the fuck. So that Celtic thing is, just a, a mist. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I think know there's an like, extreme. Uh, like we took to, to Catholicism so strongly. Like I mean, every other like Italy and Spain, then Belgium, they're Catholic countries, but they didn't take it so seriously. No, they didn't. No. They're like yeah, yeah, you know. Whatever. I wonder where the fuck that comes from. But is it the fact that we were ruled for so long, and then when we didn't have the ruler? We've decided to put, make them the ruler more so. Yeah, I think so. It's like we yeah, need the father we needed figure. someone telling us what to do. And now we've got Europe, yeah. more or less. That's <laughs> Probably, that's, yeah. Whereas we, well, I mean, then you see some people would say... And also, uh, like, this kowtowing to Apple. Isn't that unbelievable that, that uh, we uh, Don't were awarded... Uh, what was it? Billion, fifteen billion, and we go. Oh no, yeah. no, we won't. We we'll go to court to try and not get that money. I don't Because you what, don't want to offend. Don't Apple. Want, you don't want to piss them off now and get them annoyed. Fuck it's them. like they, it is like a father figure. Yeah. They get. They might leave us. Yeah. What is the fuck is wrong with us? It's, is it a lack of confidence in our Total own? A lack of confidence in our own. Uh, that we're all society, right. Like. That we can survive without the help of someone else. That they're not just here because of the tax benefits. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not because we're an educated, uh, intelligent people. And great crack. It's not. Yeah, it's and, not. and a nice place to, <laughs> yeah. to live. Yeah, it's not that. It's, it's, no, it's Yeah, you see, and I think we think, obviously, that it is because of the tax and we just don't want to ruffle their feathers yeah. because of the employment of it. I was talking to a girl over in Brussels there last week. I was doing a gig and she was like, she couldn't believe this. She was like saying, a German girl, she was going, Apple would stay if you just stand up to them. You know, they're, they're doing fine. Yeah. I think well, they're doing fine. Like they are worth a trillion dollars. They're, they're fine. Yeah, but even if they have to pay a little bit higher tax in Ireland, still less than what they pay in America. And it's funny that we're like... We stick to that 12% like, thingy. They're bastards, Apple. They should be paying tax in their own country. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a short thing they're doing anyway. Have you got, you don't have an Apple phone, do you? No, I, I went and spent well. a lot of money on the new one. I'm such a fucking whore to marketing, but I bought their, it's got facial recognition though. I'll show you one of the features. Oh, it? Yeah. yeah, you can do little characters. It's great. It's worth the, <laughs> it's worth the grand that I spent on it. Um, wow. But yeah, I always wondered about that. Like, what is the story with this that we are, that we just play that the cap and hand thing to a certain extent? We'll go on. Oh, no, sorry about that. Yeah. Now. Sorry about that. Now, just yeah. Uh, I sort that out there now. It's like that. Do you ever see oh, that? Yeah, yeah. Don't get. Did you do you not notice a lot of people were saying about Baradkar? Oh, he, I don't like the way he's looking too victorious. Uh, about the uh, Brexit deal, you know, you shouldn't really be doing. No, that. you should you put know, the head you'll down. Le- you'll annoy Theresa May now. You'll annoy. Oh, we get in trouble. But it's like, <laughs> have you, what was that uh, show on the BBC? Was it White, White, uh, White House? Oh, what's that? They, they basically one of their the 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 show was maybe ten fifteen years ago, and Paul Whitehouse and oh, yeah. the other the other guy. There was two of them worked together. Yes. And more they, famous one. They had the two characters. One was the British Lord and the other one was the Irish help. 
around the farm oh, yeah, and it was right, always that's right, 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 yeah and that's right sorry. <laughs> yeah yeah that was really good nice. and you'd wonder have we lost or have we ever whilst we might posture sometimes and we lost the plot we'd say during the Celtic Tiger um, and that's that's what they say as well oh we lost the plot we didn't know how to look after us you could argue well we did lose the plot I right? think we did though. yeah we did lose the plot yeah <laughs> yeah and some people would say, you know, there is a kind of a thing as well where there's this underlying thing at the moment that, well, do you think, I mean, Great Britain would be stronger if they could bring Ireland back into the fold. And there is that kind of air that that possibility, however far-fetched it may be, that, that, what, that we, we join back up join with back them now. It's, it's a kind of an underlying, I, that's only a sense, and I've heard it from a few people, and then from a certain generation, say an older generation, 70 on, chatting to them about it, they go, well, we have done a pretty shit job, like, of look, uh, since independence. We've done a shit We've job. We've done a shit job since independence. That would be their view. I spoke to my mother about it, and she, I, I'd say, if there was a referendum or something like that, what would you do? And she'd go, better for us all. Yeah, is that right, yeah? And like, obviously, like we have, my mother, yeah. Where is she from? She's from Waterford. She's from um, Castle Pollard. Where's that? Westmeath. Oh, Westmeath. Yeah. She's an, like Fagan. There's, you know, she's an Irish woman. If that's what you implied. No, I'm just. I'm West, always, West I'm, I'm always like. aware that inside the Pale, Meath, Dublin, Wicklow, Clare, there's definitely slightly more pro English. Yeah. Well, I think South County Dublin, there is an underlying thing of that as well. Mm. That's sort of dare I say, rugby-esque sort of vibe yeah. that is almost, it is, has some British in in its essence, yeah. I think. But I, I don't think that's unfair to say. I think it's true. Yeah. No, actually, I've said that. I've just said that, but I'd like, there's a lot of IRA activity in me as well, so. <laughs> a lot of rat activity. Go yeah. On. Yeah? Oh, well, look, I, I um, used to live in Dulik, near Dulik, and like they've got a, uh, a monument to the um, hunger strikers and stuff, and there'd be a march to that every year, and flags and stuff. I often thought, because my ex is English, grew up in London, I often, I often thought, what would happen if, say, England were playing a match and I just hung the Union Jack out the window? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because. Go on. You know, my, my yeah, you're time, supporting, you know, yeah. I, yeah. So if I was like Jamaican and they were playing a football match, I think that'd be okay. That'd be okay, but why not a Union Jack? Yeah. I suppose it's mm. the imperialistic sort of thing that has been done to the country for eighty thousand years. It's not eight hundred years. Eighty thousand. There's a bit of that, I'd say. Yeah. Probably. Well, yeah. my son wore a an English uh, football jersey when he was seven or eight or something. Uh, he wanted yeah. one because he was going, "I'm English." <laughs> It was an, and his friend he, yeah. who was born. This is his mum. Then it was English, so he would have he could have dual passports anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. And fair his, enough. And his his, and obviously because maybe he thought England were probably going to do better, so he yeah. backed the uh, more successful. But I don't know if they would have. Had, but anyway, uh, but his friend at school, who both his parents were Irish, but your man was born in London, and I think had. By the time he was one years old, he they'd moved back to Ireland. But you know, he knew he was born in London and he wanted an English jersey he's going, yeah, no, I'm in, I'm English. I was born in London. Yeah. Fair fucks. That's all a load of bollocks as well, isn't it? Really, nationality and all that's a load of bollocks. It is bollocks. Yeah, it is a load of bollocks, yeah. Totally. Well, I think it yeah, is. Yeah, I know I've been me bothered about nationalism because you're supposed to be proud to be Irish or English or Scottish, but you, it's just an accident. Yeah. That you were, your father did the, and your mum did the business in this particular country and stayed here then. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I actually could not give a flying fuck, a genuine flying fuck, but I am really interested in freedom. And so absolute freedom to me is everything. So I don't, as long as I, I just don't want any ruler or any fucking whatever. But after that, I couldn't give a flying fuck. So if being Irish means being free, then 
being free-ish. But you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't care about the, uh, what country or... I mean, there is no fucking country. It's like somebody said to me once, like, you know, can you actually dig up a piece of England and show me that it's actually what England looks like? You can't. Yeah. It's not actually real. It's an idea, country mm. name. And... Um, but I, st- I am deeply interested in the idea of freedom. Just freedom to do whatever the fuck, as long as you're not harming anybody. And I think that that can be... You know, that should be a thing that's associated with being in this country. Freedom. Ke- you know, Celtic sort of freedom. I like that. Wildness. Yeah, that, look, like, I, of course, if someone else, like the British Empire, were yeah, not, not letting you speak your own language and, and also giving your land to, they were taking our land. So they were obviously ta- you taking wanna, our land and our women. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> obviously you'd fight against that, but it's, yeah, you would, yeah. So for the freedom to express yourself. Yeah, the and I think that even the idea of paying taxes to a king or a queen is outrageous, but maybe, yeah. I mean, apparently it's good for tourism and all that lark, so. But at the same time then, to fight for freedom and then hand your freedom to the Catholic Church. And then hand is, your freedom to the EU. Yeah. In a way, yeah. It's interesting. The Catholic thing I've always found... Stunningly interesting from how everybody bought into it. Or like I bought into it completely and utterly. Like it wasn't mm. until I was older that I, I saw through it. But that the whole, I mean, I remember getting up and going to see the Pope in 1977. Or, uh, you know, that was it. Did you? Yeah, I did too, yeah. And we left in the middle of the night. I remember right. it was exciting going yeah. to see this uh, person. It's just, it is. Um, it's like going to see Westlife or something. It was yeah. Very exciting. Yeah, <laughs> I actually met all my cousins. I think it's a good old day out now. To be fair, but um, no, my gr- like there is Republican blood in my my grandfather was a Republican and he was um, a Sinn Fein councillor and um, like there's this old history book that during the Troubles and I remember when I was young flicking through it. My dad had just mm-hmm. left it. And the book itself was called The Troubles, and there I see my is my dad's family is from Clonus. But there's a picture of them running from the army. There's a, a cloud of smoke, and there's my uncle, grandfather, and another uncle running in in the muck in the field away. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a great old pic now, in fairness. Wow. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I don't. I don't think any of my family were involved in the rebellion or anything like that. Mm. They're over in Galway now. Maybe it's too far away. Uh, the west coast it's a long walk is it the west coast west coast west coast yeah it's chilled out in Galway now mm. uh, we're not looking for a rebellion anytime soon I'd say yeah no, it probably didn't affect them that much I mean they all spoke Irish and stuff like that mm. so it wasn't affecting them there um, but the, yeah. the whole, like it is it is an upsurge now everywhere nationalism yeah, it's a thing, it's, isn't it? But it seems to go like that, though, doesn't inter- it? It's not interesting, it's scary. You know? I think that it just seems to be a thing that... You, you see, I think the liberal movement has pushed so far into some people's faces so quickly that they kind of go, no, no, you're not telling me what to do, like... Yeah. And it's the same as the conservative movement telling other people what to do. It's It's the same... It is the same idea, yet... You know, on the left, I would have always considered myself a, a left, which a, a, liber, a liberal person. Yeah, but, but now I bet you, like I feel, I mean, I there is a certain extreme left wing would go, would take umbrage with a lot of things that I would believe in, like yeah. fucking free speech. Like the extreme left don't want free speech if it's speech that they disagree with. They don't want. Uh, you know, like people like who have right wing views to speak in universities. Yeah. Because, but that's part of free speech. But you, do you take that into account now? I mean, this your, I mean, comedy seems to be the one thing that is. Well, it seems to be it's so apparent then that rules are starting to creep in, and there's a bit of controversy. Uh, there's rules starting to creep in around what you can do and what you can't do. Now that would fucking kill me if I. If yeah. I was starting off with a scenario of, oh, well, now maybe if I do that, 
it's too risky. Yeah, I, look, it doesn't happen. To me. Well, no, it wouldn't happen to me. But I mean, maybe I'm not <clears> talking about the being. I haven't talked about. I haven't done any material about transgender yet. Anyway, yeah. or um, um, just the whole sexual thing. That's probably where you would definitely be. On sh- I've done stuff about Muslim. Well, I was on like the radio recently, uh, Dave Fanning show talking about this, and they had a guy on from UCD who was saying, yes, we there are, the, from the UCD Students' Union, who was saying, there are uh, people that we wouldn't allow to talk in the university like we are. And I did stuff about Muslim uh, uh, terrorism, and he was saying, yeah, maybe that material we probably would have a problem with, because we have some Muslim students. Which, to me, that's ridiculous, because... It's fine to it's it was it was apparently fine to do my uh, stuff about Jesus and that surely would offend Chris Catholics but you didn't want to be offending these Muslims. But it's I, yeah. I just don't understand how a voice this this voice has risen where suddenly it, it, it's not okay to offend somebody. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, I mean it is okay to offend somebody. You actually have to allow something offend you. You really, really do have yeah. to take umbrage with something. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, I suppose, you know, when you think of the Paddy jokes that are made for countless years about, you know, even like Paddy Simple as Paddy Englishman, Paddy Irishman, Paddy Scotsman, the Paddy Irishman always was the brunt, more or less, of that. Yeah. Now, that was just the way it was. And I, Everybody could recognise, you might find it a little bit uncomfortable, or you might, I don't know, depending on who you are, but the uncomfortableness of the joke is part of the fucking joke. Like, feeling offended is part of it. And then knowing that a, some section is offended, you know, is almost part of it too. And everybody is in on the fact, on the offence. Yeah, but it's obvious that really it's not, there is no anger there. Really, like, especially I think in for comedians a really horrible angry comedian doesn't really exist they might have rage spouting out of them you know from time to time but more than likely there's sensitive fucking twat in behind it all do you know what I mean so there's no badness in it it's just trying to push the boundaries trying to break the boundaries yeah, well, break over it's, things it's comedy is definitely a, a, a place where you should be on the boundaries all the time not all the time maybe not for a whole set or anything but that's what you're because it's that's where comedy comes from isn't it it comes from uh, um, kind of uh, releasing laughing about the things that you're sensitive about uh, that that might you know create an attention and then the uh, laughter comes from that as yeah. well uh, like Whatever. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. Now, I do a bit, little bit about Jesus now at the minute being very passive aggressive. That being crucified is a very passive aggressive thing to do because it's yeah. kind of. Uh, and uh, and mostly, and, and it goes uh, well. But sometimes in Ireland, I have to say, there's tension in the room. And we think we're so liberal, but. And it's not offensive, I don't think, in any way, because it's just saying, like. You know, being crucified is passive aggressive. It's like, oh, don't mind me. You go off and fornicate, and I'll suffer for your sins. But I'm fine with it. You know, and, and there's yeah. a bit more to it than that. But, yeah, yeah. I actually, I've included a bit. You know, that little clip that I'd say you avoided watching of us doing the. Coach oh yeah, sorry, yeah, that yeah. was ages ago. That I was talking about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you, I've already did the whole thing. Yeah, you yeah. know that clip. You know yeah. that piece of material. Yeah, I've heard but, it before, Joe. Uh, it's a year ago <laughs> since I was talking about that. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that'd be no problem in Edinburgh or uh, in the UK doing that material, and it certainly would be Ireland where the, if there is any problem with it, and the the yeah it would be. So it's funny that it's still there. Hmm. It's funny. Yeah. Oh, what's his name from who wrote Father Ted? I I found it fucking fascinating that he, he was taken umbridges. I don't even know what umbridge. I I used it. Taken Umbridge. Umbridge. Umbridge is it's a place in London. Isn't it? Yeah, I wonder. No, that's Oxbridge. <laughs> <You're> taken <laughs> Oxbridge. Uh, um, what's his name? 
obviously you. Um, Graham Lenehan. Graham Lenehan. Oh, he's been involved in the whole debate about transgender. Yeah, right? but he gave out, or it was basically the whole thing about the dog doing the Nazi salute. You've seen that. that yeah. uh, this, yeah. Your man trained a dog to do a Nazi to salute. do a Nazi salute and he was brought to court and prosecuted. Right. And your man, Jonathan Pye, was saying, I mean, this is disgraceful. It's obviously a joke. Even if there's a fence cause or whatever, it's the underlying thing that obviously this is a joke. Whereas Graham Linton, of all, I suppose of all people, given Father Ted and given that Father Ted was came was a coincided in with Father Ted. Yeah, it? there was. There, it was, and also there was the Chinese hat on. You know, he put the Chinese lantern on. Mm. Like so, there was. And he was starting to do his eyes like that to try and be like a Chinese person. Yeah. And that was like, that is, let's just say that it's racist and it's whatever else. But then the whole program was built on taking the piss out of religion. Yeah. In, and the priests that were in it, everything about it, no stone was left unturned mm. in terms of ripping that apart. And he made his living out of that. Mm. And then... I just couldn't get my head around how is his age or where how the fuck did he think that he could just jump on the bandwagon and say well what this is the line here and you can't cross this one I don't know I don't know and I, yeah. I, I believe he well I've read that he has a thing about trans the transgender movement are anti feminist isn't it he's basically saying that now he's that uh a man can just say, well, I'm actually a transgender woman and walk into a women's dressing room in a pool, a swimming pool or something yeah. uh, and go, oh, no, I'm a, I'm, I'm a woman. I don't know. But he's, get, he's talking about stuff like that. I mean, he has a... But well, that's kind of interesting. He has a point yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, there's a he was on the uh, conservative side of that argument definitely as well uh, well he was he was saying he was cut, drawing a line on what you could joke about though with Jonathan Pye who I think Jonathan Pye is a really sincere sort of dude I don't know if yeah. you've ever seen any of his stuff but um, he was kind of saying Jonathan Pye was it wasn't funny or not that it wasn't funny that it was obviously racist and it's not good enough and he should be prosecuted it's not obviously racist though is it no, no. well I mean sorry it's a pug Doing a Nazi yeah. salute. Yeah. How? It's actually funny. I laugh. But like, that. it's fucking so ridiculously. Uh, I don't know if the owner thought it was funny. Say the owner was a racist. It's still hardly the most. There's so many other issues to do with racism. Racism. But you if you if you if you were wondering how the conservative movement would rise. It rises as a reaction to those sorts of comments because people are just going fuck off, like. Yeah. Oh, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It plays into the hands of the right wing. Yeah. Does, yeah. 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 Um, Don't you look? Yeah, like there's. Uh, yeah, yeah. This idea that everything is that uh, you can't even hear. Ex- like, if if there are people with dangerous views or whatever like dangerous views or whatever yeah uh, you know with right-wing views and they come to speak at the university surely the thing is to uh debate the point with them or, mm. or not go to to listen to them uh not to actually stop them from yeah. speaking because well, that really does play into the hands of fascism it, 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 you can't stand up then for yourself almost or you can't then so if you stop one side then you're, you're actually stopping the other side too though you you're mm. you're cutting off both i mean you see i i think it's this it's it's this almost fucking soft sort of offended which we all can get offended but it's allowing that bullshit to rise of that offense is going to kill you you know, so I can't, don't, yeah. don't offend me. Uh, you know, I'm all fucking, uh, I, I'm high and mighty and above all things and you, you, you are offending me. It's like dudes, say men who are to really play this feminist card 
God. A virtue signal signaling, isn't it? It's kind of like I'm really yeah. There's sorry to say that but there's like a I think dudes who are feminists, women don't really need men to stand up for them. They just don't need no. men to fucking get in their way, like really. But they don't need men. Well, in my opinion, no, no. Just get out of the way as opposed to being a fucking feminist. Yeah. You're you're just kind of you're Yeah, you're you're letting your own down, I think, now if you're going down that route. How can you be a feminist really well, like It depends on what what you call feminism, I suppose. Yeah. I suppose you could say that if feminism is equality between men and women, then it favours men as well because it means that men should have equal rights to be parents, should have equal rights to time off, you know, matern- paternity leave. Mm. But it, in that sense, it should yeah. favour both sexes. Yeah. 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 Um, All of that. So, uh, in that case, I'd agree. You know, you could be a feminist. Yeah. Man, but I mean, it means, it means, you know, it means like I mean, it's it means that if if there's war, it shouldn't just be all fucking men going off. <laughs> yeah. <time. laughs> no, I look after the kids now. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> well, I mean, it's not that yeah, long ago that, uh, that uh, millions of young men were were died in in Europe. Yeah, uh, it's only a hundred years ago, and uh, it's just uh, mad to think that that certain people think would say then that that that's uh, what you call a. Uh, uh, it's a society run by men or whatever. But oh yeah, I saw know. that as well. This this idea that's a patriarchy. Patriarchy, theme. sorry, that's yeah. the word. Yeah. But patriarchy, yeah, all that shit. Like I, I just think it's simple. Get out the fucking way. Like do what you want to do. Like start your own business. Get just do what you ever you want to do with, and both men and women. Just do yeah. what you want to do. Like that's it. Yeah. Just don't hurt anybody and yeah, but like don't be annoying me like I that. I just think that the society... <laughs> I know, but it was society was set up in a way where there was no contraceptive. People had sex, they had loads of kids. Uh, it turns out women were... It turns women are better at looking after them. They are better. Any dude and, says anything... And that's the country. way society ended up going. So men went out and worked and women looked after children. I know, and it, I'm sure there was loads of men who didn't fucking want to go out and work and... Would prefer to have stayed at home, maybe. Yeah. And loads of women who want would prefer to have gone out to work, but it was yeah. a, fuck it. It's the only way things worked out. Mm. But it wasn't like. I think this idea that you see, it's you. T- what what's happening is you're taking a finite number of powerful men and saying they're all men. Now, you know, but that's what this patriarchy is. That men have taken over. And, you know, men have all the brilliant jobs and all this sort of fucking thing. Which, yeah. I don't know about... It may or may not be true, but the the point is you're taking a finite number of extreme overachievers and saying that's the way it is. The average dude just plods along. <laughs> that's right, yeah. We're not looking for any trouble. Yeah. And yeah. more than likely, we'll, if we've got some partner that we're with, whatever way that partner is... You you bend in like in all things in life. You compromise in certain things, and you you, you work together. But that's the average, I think, for the yeah. most part. That's the average thing. There isn't. I mean, you don't come home and go first me dinner, love. I mean, those days are long gone. Do you ever like? Do you ever watch Mad Men? And uh, do you, you know the advertising. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd arrive home. Yeah. He'd put the bag, uh, his leather briefcase down and his umbrella and the wife had hand him a glass of whiskey and she'd say to the kids uh, just keep it down now. and he'll go up uh, he'll go I need to go upstairs just to clear my head <laughs> with the newspaper amazing now, <laughs> <laughs> now if you were to ask any man in his right would he say that's you know if he could get away with that he's going to get away with it he will yeah, take the opportunity yeah, now yeah. you know if it's all kicking but off the majority of men I'm sure that you know you're pretty 
it, you can be guaranteed that's not what happened. They came home and their wife was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now, I, I still think, I'm sorry, I know my dad would have helped out at home. Mm. But to a certain extent. Now, I know uh, Nuna's dad, he's never going to be watching this, but he's he never watched a, um, or he never changed a nappy in his life. Yeah, I'm, I wonder if my father did. I doubt it. I doubt it. Yeah. Uh, however, I lived on a farm, so my mother would be out on the farm as well. Like, uh, uh, I always got the impression, but see, I can't. So my mother died when I was 11, so I wouldn't know exactly uh, what. But I always got the impression my mother was really running the farm. Yeah. yeah. I think, I mean, this isn't a feminist thing to say that women are better than us, like. I mean, it's not, I'm not, being, not letting me own down. I think we'd all agree that they're better people than we are, nicer with kids, just better all round. They do more shit, like, you know. I no? think so, but I mean, that may be just me. Maybe I'm just fucking useless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, I think so, like some women are are very on the ball, like very on the ball, very on the ball. Well, but I mean, when it comes to like, task, like I remember when it comes to getting presents for people, they know they get you a really good present, and I'm going. I don't know what to get her, like. Yeah. But they're even able panic. to say if uh, we were uh, chatting here now, say and say there was another conversation. Say if you're going out with Amadine and she's mm. obviously listening to you and every word you're saying but yeah. more than likely she's hearing what's going on in the other conversation over there like too As well. and when you finish talking she'll go oh no I was just it sounds like they're having a fight and she'll right. able to multitask that whereas, yeah. I mean we can just about listen and if it gets anyway boring we're up here like going yeah, thinking yeah. about something else yeah uh, was that uh, well, something to like do we're being with, a bit uh, fucking feminist now, so. was that something to do with like uh, how, uh, that men had to focus on one thing like hunting or something <laughs> <laughs> let's just say it is so yeah you couldn't be listening to other people chatting over the other side of the field or whatever <laughs> or the desert or whatever well, I, I see or it, jungle I see it in my own kids that were the two lads are just just like lads at a stag do constantly like they're just fucking you know Rawr, yeah. Rawr, rawr. Whereas, like, Faye is at least earthed. She's actually just earthed on the ground here, uh, aware of what's going on, more yeah. in tune to what's happening. Whereas the lads just go around and fucking yeah. want to pay the shit out of each other and all that shit. Like, yeah, no. Well, I had a boy and a girl, but you know, I could see them completely different. You know? Yeah. And. And apparently why men succeed in, you know, in uh, business or whatever is that they, someone will go, who can do this? And a man will go, yeah, I can do that. Even though he hasn't a clue. <laughs> a woman yeah. will be going, oh, I don't, I'm oh, actually not qualified. I don't think I could do that properly. Yeah. That's the ability to blag it almost. <laughs> and almost they will doubt, whereas the lads will just go, ah, oh, be grand. Like, you know, we just get through it. Like. Yeah. Because that's because we're not capable, probably, of thinking of all the possibilities that you know, all the potential things that can go wrong. Whereas maybe the brains yeah. are differently structured where yeah. they seem way more risk, and that makes it. But I mean, we're, we're bored yeah. now, I haven't a clue like either. Like, so, I was, I was talking to my friend over in America, he's saying, uh, this fella came over to um, the states back in the 80s anyway, but uh, he saw a job, uh. He's in middle of America. He saw a job for a skiing instructor and he went for it. He'd never skied in his life. And he fucking got the job. Wow. And it was just he was out on the slope with a group. And it was quite obvious that he couldn't even fucking ski. Oh my God. And they went, shit, he, he just <laughs> has a clue. He's but, a legend. But isn't See, that he's a le- amazing? Oh, he's amazing. What a legend. <laughs> I mean, skiing is so hard, like, you know. <laughs> But isn't that fucking amazing? Oh, That's brilliant. some yeah. bloke just went, yeah, yeah, and oh yeah. That is I've taught not, over in, uh, do 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 in Switzerland. Germany. How hard can it be? <laughs> 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 oh, fuck, yeah. Uh, we're great, really. We're dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Um, but, um, 
What time are we at there, actually? Are you going to do on your... Uh, we're yeah. over the hour, I'd say. All oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd say we're a good bit over. Uh, it's 12.34. 12.34, right. Okay. So, uh... Sure, we might as well keep on chatting, but I might turn this... Do you want to have... To I, I'll, um, I'll turn this off. If you want. Yeah, or what do you think? Yeah, whatever, I don't know. Um, yeah, just uh, do one thing, just uh, play it there. I mean, it's, it's too late anyway. Um, just on the off chance that... Well, go not, on uh, y- uh, YouTube. Your there. job. Yeah. Do your job. And uh, it should be here. Just play. Yeah, just play now. See where it's at. Is it still? Oh yeah, that's still me looking. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, I have a new camera coming now. Thank you, Joe. Hey, thanks, Frank. Frank, Frank, morning, man. 